as we enter the classroom, we're always thinking about teaching. What concept are we going to try to convey? Or what's the objective that we're going to meet? And largely, this is in terms of verbs. Language. They do something, and then we explain the language of it. Or we explain the language of it, and then they do something. Or we explain the language, and we don't do anything, which I've found to be the case sometimes. Are there ways that we can get children to understand, to learn? Are there ways that we can convey meaningful information about music without the use of verbs? What you're going to see here is a kindergarten class at Centers. And I found the, the young man that you're going to see engaged in this musical pattern. And it really doesn't matter what the pattern is for the boy, but for us it was a ta ta ti ti ta. And I used this moment to not accompany, but to compliment what he did with his rhythm and that we had sort of a dialogue going on, or a duet. Maybe not a dialogue, but a duet. Take a listen. <laughs> nonverbal communication this young boy and I were having musically. And two, that I could put aside all the other musical sounds coming from the room and attend to his pattern, and more importantly, he was blocking out all of that sound attending to my musical pattern that was based on his, sort of that reciprocity solidarity. We were together, united in making music. And yes, this is just a simple, not just, this is a simple example that could happen anywhere at any time. But the fact is, it can happen. This is a precious musical moment for this boy who is understanding intuitively, orally, the difference between a duple pattern and a triple pattern. And he may never be able to remember duple or triple. And really, that doesn't matter when he's 100 years old. It really doesn't matter. What matters is that he's making music and that he can learn. He can learn about music without having someone blah, 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 blah. 